Welcome everyone to another episode of the Art of Slowing Down podcast. It's your host, Jana Lena, and I'm super delighted and happy to have an amazing guest with me here today. Her name is Rachel Hopp. Welcome, Rachel. Before I read your amazing bio, I just want to say hi. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. So I'm going to read her bio now, and then we're going to have a really beautiful conversation. So Rachel... As an experienced yoga instructor and mindfulness coach, she's a guiding light for women seeking more balance, joy, and fulfillment in their lives. Having navigated her own battles with stress, overthinking, and negative self-talk, Rachel really understands the craving for self-compassion, intuition, and a more holistic approach to wellness. Through her online yoga and mindfulness membership, the Zen space and personalized coaching, Rachel empowers her clients to release control quiet the inner critic, and connect more deeply with their intuition. With a nurturing, judgment-free approach, she helps women cultivate the ease, spiritual nourishment, and holistic well-being they have been seeking, both on and off the yoga mat. I absolutely love this. Welcome, Rachel. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, so I'm going to give everyone a little bit of a backstory. So Rachel has been in my world for a little while. She has also taken some of my courses. And one of the things we're also going to talk a little bit more about is her podcast. Rachel has a podcast, so she was also part of the Easy Podcast launch recently. We're also working one-on-one -on -one a little bit. And we, I think it's now almost a year, I think, right? We have been working together. I believe so, because I came yeah. into the art of managing magic yeah last year well fall exactly so yeah it's almost you know it has been a little while and Rachel has really beautifully evolved in her business and you know supporting people with mindfulness which I think is such a important topic in this busy hectic mostly stress everywhere world right and yes yeah so first I don't even know where to start right now because there's so much goodness going on, but I would love actually to hear, first of all, a little bit of your story, you know, bringing your passion into the world, which obviously is yoga and mindfulness. And just tell us a little bit about it. What, what evokes that passion inside of you, right? And what is the impact you want to make with that in the world? Yeah, so I actually have this quote stuck to my desk, and it's from mindful.org, and it says that mindfulness is the basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where we are and what we're doing, and not overly reactive and overwhelmed by what's going on around us. Mm -hmm. And I was in a super high stress job for a while, and I just... Um, you know, I spent so much time in my head, so much time with this uh, constant worrying, those ruminating thoughts, these, you wake up in the morning and you're feeling defeated before you even start the day. Mm -hmm. And so this practice of mindfulness, of coming back to my breath, of coming back to my body, of intentionally slowing down, even for just a few moments has just been so powerful, not only in helping me to manage and reduce that stress, but also just helping me to kind of come back home to myself and to feel, you know, more grounded, more connected, more centered so that I'm more able to move through my day from a proactive energy rather than reacting to everything that's hitting me. So that's been my experience with mindfulness. It just helps me to stay more grounded as I move throughout my day and to be less reactive and more accepting. Mm, and I mean, this is huge because I think I shared with you personally that I'm working. I think we're all working on this all the time, you know, because it brings me back also to Eckhart Tolle. I think he's the one person I talk here and there on a lot of episodes because it's the power of now, right? It's it's really fully being present with what is. So, so for example, what's been coming up for me right now, or what I notice when the mind shatter is going on, which I think happens to a lot of us. So cooking, for example. You know, I, I can cook, very stressed, I need to fit it in, rushed, all of that. And then probably it doesn't taste as well. It's not going to be the greatest meal. But when I really put the intention to actually enjoying, if that's slicing the cucumber, preparing the meat or whatever else I'm cooking, it can actually be a very relaxing, mindful experience with that. Yes, yes. I'm with you on that. It's so... Um 
when you approach your tasks in daily life, we've talked about this, it's like bringing the magic into the mundane, right? So Mm -hmm. it's bringing that sense of mindful awareness into how we're moving throughout our day to day. Yeah, yeah. And what I have noticed, which is still a paradox to my mind, because we always feel like we have to get all these things done. And when we're so much in our head, right, we're, we're so busy in our mind, but I always notice I don't get much done at all. But I'm still like going fast. But when I slow down, and actually take more time to cook, for example, I get more done also. I enjoy the meal. I feel more nourished. It's a beautiful experience. And I guess, like you said, right, we're more connected to the present moment. We are mindful with what is right in front of us. And then we can just move so much more graceful and more productive. Yes, it is. It's kind of a... Like you said, it's it's a surprising side effect of slowing down and, and being present with what you're doing. You actually do find that, at least for me as well, that I am more productive. I do get more done. And the quality of what I do is better. But that's huge, right? Especially for, I mean, we are both so, right, and I, just to give everybody a little bit of a background, we are both managers in Tropical, right? That's how we also first connected. So we very well know how we can be multi-passionate and be doing all the things. Now, on our journey with True Sidereal, I'm a generator now and you're a projector, right? And I think you also have found really great resonance with the projector, right? Like the more focused approach there. Yes, yes. It's been such a fascinating journey because I think the many gen the manifesting generator came into my life at a time where I needed it's almost like it gave me permission to do all these things I was passionate about and now like I'm just craving this like I have this huge desire to slow down and do less and that's when I found out you know in, in true sidereal I'm a projector and so that more focused approach is so in alignment with where I'm at on my own life path right now I love that because it also shows us that these different charts they come into our life when we need it, right? In some way. And it's not like, well, you have to pick. I can only be this or that. You know, at some point this was like serving me. Because I feel the same with like, I'm still a multi-passionate person. And I just needed that permission at the time that I can do that. I can fully live it out. And then there's another phase in our life where it's like, okay, now a little bit more focus maybe, you know? Because then maybe too many things can also stress us out. And with everything, right? We can fall into being too multi-passionate and like being all over the place and not get anything done, right? Yes. And I think that's what I wanted to get. So that the manifesting generator, we have this thing with like skipping steps, right? And so with a mindfulness can be such a blessing because when we rush too much, often we skip the wrong stuff and we just want to get it over with you know, and then we have to go back and redo it. And it takes us like five hours because we made a mistake. (laughs) I was like, very frustrating. Oh yeah. And when we slow down and just are mindful with a specific task, which I have also found that sometimes it's better to wait for the right time, Mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes the body is just not, it's not the right time and we can feed it and sense it. And that's when we tend to make the mistakes and then it takes longer. So yeah, I, I honestly find mindfulness is one of the, if not the most important life skill we can ever have, right? Because it's literally like enjoying life with what is versus being stuck in the past or being constantly worried about the future. And then we're not actually focusing and doing the things that are right in front of us, right? Yeah, I think about how much of my life, how much time I have spent either worrying about the future or ruminating on something in the past or making up these worries that, you know, probably will never even happen. But instead of living in the moment that I have in front of me right now, instead of being present with the people that are in front of me right now, I'm off in la-la land somewhere thinking about, you know, these things that I'm worrying about or things that have already happened that I could have done differently. Mm. And you know, when we come back to the moment, we're able to more fully experience life as it unfolds right before us. And I just think that's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the work you do, because you are a yoga and mindfulness teacher. So yoga is a really big focus of your work. And I think sometimes, 
at least me growing up, like yoga is, you know, yeah, you go to a yoga studio and you do like the yoga poses. But I think the connection, especially with mindfulness. So can you a little bit elaborate on like, how can yoga help us with mindfulness and, and really what yoga is? Because I from I have learned from you a little bit by now. Yoga is so much more than just doing the yoga poses, right? Yeah, yeah. So yoga is... Um... The physical practice, the asana, is actually only one. There's eight limbs of yoga, and the asana is one-eighth of the practice. So there's oh, so wow. much more to it than that. It's really this union between the mind, the body, the heart, the soul. So it's this connection to the entirety of our being, but also the connection of ourselves with the whole. So our connection with um, whatever we perceive the universe or source to be, it's our connection with the divine um, and mm. our connection with ourselves. And so... There's the meditation aspect of it. There's a breathwork aspect of it. There's the physical movement practice of it. Um, but it's really, my favorite saying is yoga is the journey of the self through the self to the self. It's a coming mm. home. It's an allowing ourselves to be exactly who we are, exactly what we are, and to love and accept ourselves exactly as we are. And so the eight limbs of yoga offers us this roadmap to cultivate a mindful peaceful, joyful life of um, fulfillment. Mm. I love this because you know me, I'm into human design, obviously, right? And that's also similar here. Just like human design, it's about loving ourselves, accepting ourselves, being really true who we are. And it shows that it doesn't have to be one thing, right? It's like, for some people, it's yoga. For some people, it's human design. For some people, it's the combination of both, right? Because you have an interest also for both. While your main focus is teaching the yoga, for me, the main focus is more on human design, gene keys, astrology. But in essence, it's about bringing ourselves back to who we are, right? Yeah. So, so why, why is that the biggest challenge we have? that we're not true to who we are. What's your take on that? I think, you know, from a very young age, we are conditioned to fit in, to mold ourselves into these standards, to not mm -hmm. stand out. And, you know, we just are conditioned to let go of who we are, to dim our light. And I think part of that is like peeling back the layers, you know, all of these things that we've, we've, given up or lost about ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think I'll probably spend the second half of my life unpeeling all those layers to try to figure out like, who was I before I started, you know, yeah. trying to mold myself into the shape that, you know, we've got our parents telling us we should be and do certain things, our teachers, all these different rules and restrictions. And um, mm -hmm. at the heart of it all, it can be hard to maintain our sense of self through all of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, instead of becoming something where we need to like figure things out, it's actually letting go, releasing and unbecoming of uh -huh. what we're not. So we can access this beautiful, authentic self that's really within us. Right. It's just like you said, we have to peel those, those layers of an onion. Yeah. It's probably, it's, we have it kind of upside down, right? And uh -huh, yeah. sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I think we do. Yeah. Well, at least we're figuring out now. You know? <laughs> yes, exactly. So with that, I want to make the connection now to the business because just like me, you're an online entrepreneur, right? And we enjoy the freedom of um, sharing our gifts through the online space in some way, right? Where we connect with a lot of people, also obviously in person and things like that. And one of the things I think that you and I have very much in common, and I think it's most people that also come into my world, is that we had something in the beginning that felt really true to us that we wanted to do. And then we got into this path. Also, I think conditioning a little bit where we bought into these ideas that there are some people out there that have the solution for us, often these very high ticket programs where we're being taught to create a sales funnel, where we're being taught to do X, Y, Z, and we shouldn't do certain things that actually really felt good to us. But we were like, well, that's not how it can be successful, right? And then after the years of frustration and often also over-investing into things that are not aligned for us, but again, great learning lessons, right? We kind of come back 
home because I know, so we have been working together, right? I think you mentioned it at some point, like, yeah, this is what I wanted to do in the beginning. And then there were some people telling me I can't do this or I shouldn't do this, or that's what I have to do. And then I tried that. And now here I am years later going back to what I really wanted in the beginning. So tell us a little bit about your experience with that. Yeah, so I started out um, as a yoga teacher and I, I wasn't planning to teach. I was planning to just deepen my own practice. But then the more I learned, I was like, oh my gosh, like I have to share this with people. Mm -hmm. So I started teaching yoga. And of course, when I first started teaching yoga, I was like, I am going to make this my like profession. I'm going to do this. I'm going to share this. I'm going to, it's amazing. Everybody needs to know about this. And then people started telling me, well, it's really hard to make a living as a yoga teacher. You can't just teach yoga. Um, if you, it's just too much. You'll be teaching 60 classes a week. You'll be working 60 classes, mm -hmm. 60 hours a week. Um, they're like, you can't do it. And so I got into that negative space in my head, that negative self-talk where like, oh, okay, I can't do it. It's, it's too hard. Um, and so I started going after all these different certifications and building up all these different resources. But, you know, when I first started offering holistic wellness services to the world, I just dove in. I hadn't, I don't know anything about marketing. I didn't know anything about, you know, mm -hmm. how to create a program. I just dove in and shared from my heart. And, I, you know, I had very reasonable prices, actually, probably extremely too reasonable prices at the very mm -hmm. beginning. But it was just so much fun. And then I started getting in my head about it. And mm -hmm. I took this super expensive program on how to build your business. And they were all focused about high ticket and it just felt sleazy to me. It didn't feel good. I tried doing what they said and I just felt so unaligned, so misaligned that I thought of, I was just going to throw in the towel. Like, I can't, I can't do this. If this is mm -hmm. what running your own business is like, this is not for me. And so coming full circle, like peeling back the layers, um, I'm just sharing from my heart again. I'm. It's all about the yoga and the mindfulness. And I just share it in a way that feels authentic to me. And mm. it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So you're coming back to where you were originally, right? And I think <laughs> yes. sometimes we, we just need to take a detour to realize of how beautiful that actually is. And now let me ask you, did you feel like when you were trying to push into the way of how it should be done, according to certain programs or mentors out there, um, were you like more successful or does it feel more successful when you're actually having more fun and joy and really do how you please? So for me, success is not about the money. Success is about mm. joy. And so yeah. now I feel successful because I'm having so much fun. There's joy, there's passion, there's fulfillment. Like I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. I'm sharing from a space that is heart-centered, that feels genuine. And so I feel much more successful now. I probably made more money then, but um, mm. I don't think anybody really teaches yoga for the money. <laughs> maybe we, maybe they do, but yeah. um, you know, it's, it's just a side effect of sharing our passion. Yeah. Yeah. And also what I have found is that the money always comes. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes more and even more unexpected, right? Because it's it's based on a solid foundation. Like, yeah, we can with force, we can make money in certain ways, but that is usually only for a little bit of time and we cannot sustain it, right? And then it's it's like, well, I I don't want to say we wasted time there, right? But we learned that, okay, this is not my path, this is not how it works for me. And when we really build a solid foundation, right? where it's like, it's like planting a flower, right? We nurture the seed and the ground and we keep flowering it, uh, watering it with water. Yeah. And then over time it turns into this beautiful thing, right? And and you also, you're now attracting more opportunities, right? In the, in the, in the yoga space and everything. Yes, yes, it's been so much fun. Yeah, so just really, really excited for you. And the other thing is, so you have also a podcast now. So you were part of the Easy Podcast launch. So first, I want to actually ask you, like, what intrigued you to be part of the course? How was the journey? I mean, anything you want to share? I'm probably going to, as we talk, ask you a couple more questions about it. Yeah. So 
in the beginning of 2023, I had set a goal for myself to start a podcast that year. And then I had a career transition. And um, so my energy and attention was needful, like necessarily drawn towards learning this new role. Mm. And so I kind of put the podcast on the back burner. And it was like, you know, when the time is right, it will come. Um, but the time was not right. And then, of course, I got all in my head about it. I'm a continuously recovering perfectionist. And so... Um, <laughs> I kept getting in my head about it and I was doing all this research, but I wasn't taking any action. And so I was like, okay, as 2023 drew to an end, I decided 2024 was my year. I was bringing this dream back and I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. And as things went align, I saw your post that you were doing an easy podcast launch. And I already knew from working with you that the, like the Manny Gen magic, like I already knew I loved working with you. So I was like, awesome. I'm going to do this. <laughs> I just and made it, it for so you. Easy. <laughs> it was, oh, did right? I make <laughs> yeah no that's awesome yeah I had the nuts to get it out into the world because well as you know this podcast has been around for over two years now and I don't think it's so complicated to put a podcast out into the world so what was what was easy about it or what 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 did you think was complicated before and then it turned out to be easy through the course the technology side of things I thought was really, and I'm actually pretty good at technology. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know why I got so hung up in it, but there are so many choices out there and you mm -hmm. don't know if you're going to pick the right one. And then because I was so multi-passionate in nature, I didn't know, I was worried that I would pick a topic and then I would change my mind and that I would be perceived as being flaky. Um, when in reality, I just have so many different passions. I could talk about all kinds of different mm -hmm. things. And so um I think the tech, I couldn't name it. I could not come up with a name to save my life. So <laughs> mm -hmm. the tech, the naming, and the topic, those were the three things that I kept going mm. back and forth on. Like, it overwhelmed me. Mm. Yeah, I love that. So yeah, because you put it beautifully out into the world. So your podcast, tell us, tell us the name. It's the Magic Mindfulness Podcast. Yeah, so, and... It's out there. You launched it. It felt very effortless and easy. And that's that's what I also have been yeah, seeing in the entire group because there were several podcasts that were launched. And um, it was such a joy for me also to see because for me, it was like, well, it's so easy. And as you know, sometimes I talk about this two-line energy where, well, it's so easy. Everybody knows how to launch a podcast. And I had to realize for myself that, well, it's probably not as easy for everybody else just because it's easy for me, right? And it was also a huge learning lesson for me, right? That what I thought is just this like common sense in my mind, right? In my limited mind. <laughs> and I shared this with you guys and it was so helpful, right? It was such a fulfilling experience for myself as, you know, it's like, wow, now I can really make impact because, well, I make impact with my podcast. Now you make impact with your podcast, right? But then it's like, okay, now I'm empowering other women to have their own podcast and I'm kind of part of this evolution. So that was like, wow, I could really see like the global, global impact like right in front of me. So really, really awesome. Yeah. Yes, I talk about... um like the ripple effect. I love collaborating with other, you know, in person, I'll collaborate with other yoga teachers, but um, in the podcast, it's given me an opportunity to collaborate with other guest experts. And it's just been so mm -hmm. nice because when we share each other's messages, it's like you were saying this, it just ripples out into the world. And so it's just such a nice way to um, connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's also, it's kind of a win-win in so many areas because one, a podcast helps you be consistent in the world outside of social media, right? That was such a big thing for myself because, well, you and I were both on Instagram, right? And we're pretty consistent mm -hmm. there as well. But I mean, Instagram, maybe one day we're not feeling it anymore. Maybe Instagram decides to close the doors and we're like, okay, what now? And so it's really nice to to have that. And like you also say, like you and I, we're doing right now, we're having a conversation, we talk about things, right? And sometimes you meet also new people that find your podcast somewhere, then they reach out to you. There may be some other collaborations coming out of that. We don't even know all the amazingness that, that can really come from that. And which for me is the biggest thing, and you tell me how this has been for you so far, 
you become so much more confident because you you start to speak even when you're uncomfortable, even when you're nervous, right? Like you practice on a consistent basis to get out there, to talk about things, even when you doubt yourself, when you question yourself and all this stuff. So how, how has that been for you? Yes, that's so true. And um, yoga has helped me get used to being uncomfortable. When, when we mm -hmm. went through the pandemic, we took our classes online. So I had to learn how to teach a yoga class online when most people had their screens black and I couldn't see what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I realized how much I feed off of the energy in the room to determine how I'm going to be teaching that day. And so in, in the instance of the podcast, I loved how you had to start recording right out the gate, even before we had a name, even before we had anything. And we didn't have to show it to anybody, but it was just so helpful to get that initial like nervousness out of your system and let go of the perfectionism, which I struggle with so much. Mm. That's right. We did a podcast challenge from the beginning. I had you guys just get this out there. Yeah. We jumped into the cold water. Definitely. But you guys did amazing. Yeah. And because then it was really when it was time to launch the podcast, that could have really hold you back otherwise, right? We could have figured out, we could have figured out the name, we could have figured out all the tech stuff. But then the biggest thing, that's really what it is. Like actually like, okay, I'm going to be in the microphone. I'm going to record myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. And it was yeah. so fun to see, like, we had such an amazing community. And it was so fun to see everybody's personal evolution mm. as we grew mm. together. Yeah, yeah. No, there's really something with community, because you also realize that, well, I'm not the only one that is struggling with, I don't know what to talk about, or I'm not the only one that not in your case right now, but some maybe some people struggle with tech issues, right? Maybe some other people yeah, I have some really big fears to overcome to even record their first episode and stuff like that. So it's so nice to see, right? Like, oh, this is normal. This is part of the process, you know? And it's also like when we launch a podcast, while it's easy, right? Like you, you said, the overall experience was easy. You still got uncomfortable. You still had to stretch yourself into new ways of doing things and overcoming some doubts and fears and all the things, right? Still, still part of the process. Yes. Yes. Awesome. So how does it feel now, like in your business that if you look maybe like a year ago compared to now that now you have a podcast and you have been, how many episodes do you have right now? I think I'm up to seven. now. Yeah. Which is awesome. Right? Yeah. So, so how, how does that feel to have this? It's almost like you have another lag that your business is standing on. I think it's great. Like one thing you mentioned um, with, with the social media outlets, remember when Facebook went down for a while and mm. nobody could get in and like, they can change it at any time. I have no control over the algorithm. I have like, I can show up consistently as long as it's a platform for me to show up on, mm -hmm. but I don't have any control over that platform. The podcast, I feel like it's like my home base. It's given me this sense of um, like an anchor kind of mm -hmm. to keep me grounded. Mm -hmm. And it just feels so much, it's fun. And I can share my heart with the world. I get to interview these awesome people and share their light with the world. And so it's just mm -hmm. been really, I think it's a really, really positive addition to my little business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then also for content repurposing, right? You can share on your Instagram about your podcast. You can create an email about it. You can create a blog post about it. We can share it on LinkedIn, whatever other platforms we're on. Exactly. And the cool thing is that really made me realize at the time how I love having a podcast is that, you know, on social media, there's thousands of people. I mean, how much attention do you get? Like maybe a little scroll and a millisecond or something like that. And then they already forgot about it because they're already onto the next thing. Yeah. Now your your podcast, they choose to listen to you, right? And I think that's that's incredibly amazing. And you know, I recently, and this is now after over two years, you know, the, the best compliment or review I received from somebody about my podcast. What's that? So I have had many times where people like they share their favorite podcast and mine is one of them. You know, I'm like one of 25 or one of 10 or something, or I'm in their top five or top three. So I was like, wow, this is really cool. But recently, I think it was a month ago or several weeks ago, there was somebody sharing in their stories. I don't know if I saved it. I have to check. But they actually said that 
my podcast is the only podcast they're now listening to. I was like, oh my gosh. I felt oh, like, wow. wow. Also that they had, because I guess my message is like, slow down, less is more, focus more on one thing. Because it's true, right? If we if we listen to like 25 podcasts, I mean, how much time we have? It's also, you know, inviting us to be selective. I was like, wow, this is so cool. Well, it's like one person. I felt it was such a, ah, fulfilling. It, it was a moment of success for me. I was like, yes, this is wow. I was like, I made it. <laughs> yes, yes. That's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So... Tell us a little bit more about the Zen space. So the Zen space is my new um, online yoga and mindfulness membership. And mm -hmm. so it's just a really fun little space for people to connect. We have live weekly, oh, they're about weekly online yoga classes and then replays. I've got a growing library of mindfulness practices, a growing library of on-demand yoga practices. So if you can't join one of the live classes, you can just um, fit that class mm -hmm. into your um, your life, wherever works for you. We have a daily, uh, monthly, pardon me, a monthly intention mm -hmm. setting practice. And so it's just a nice way to kind of set a monthly intention yeah. to work on our personal growth and development and to connect to a more regular yoga and mindfulness practice. And so it's been a lot of fun to get this up and going. Yeah. And like, who is the ideal person for this beautiful community space? I would say mostly women in midlife and beyond. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with different transitions, you know, depending on mm -hmm. each one of our unique situations and circumstances. But, you know, maybe we're dealing, we're caring for aging parents. Maybe mm -hmm. our children are not mine, but their children are getting older. They're getting to mm -hmm. a point in their life where they have more time for themselves. Finally, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say finally, but you know what I mean? For the well, first yeah, time well, in a long time. <laughs> it's like when the, I mean, I think it's can create kind of like a little midlife crisis where the kids leave the house. My, my daughter is like almost 12 now. And I'm like, I'm starting to be like, well, I mean, in six years, she's going to go to college, you know, it's, yes. it's, I think it can create some anxiety to be honest. Yeah. And, and I like, think you're right. Because it's like, okay, what am I going to do with my life now? Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then also, like, I'm in my mid-40s. And mm -hmm. so I I don't go to yoga to sweat anymore. I go to yoga to relax. I go to yoga to connect with myself. And so mm -hmm. my classes are very, um, they're very relaxing. I teach, mm -hmm. a, I call it a mindful slow flow. But we just move very gently, very mindfully. Not to say that it's never challenging, but we're not, you know, moving through the poses crazy fast or anything yeah. it's a very relaxing and mindful experience yeah I love that actually now that you mentioned because we had a conversation about it because I mean there's so many different types of yoga I know there's like hot yoga and, yeah. and super intense almost like a you know like a weightlifting workout kind of thing and you mainly focus actually on relaxation in the yoga, right? Which I think is the most nourishing we need. And that's how also the, we can heal so much more. We can release so much more. And oftentimes, well, we think we need exercise, but if it puts more stress on the body, it's actually not helping us, right? So um, it's it's almost like a, well, meditation, relaxation, yoga, and you get to be physically active all in one, right? Yes. Um, yes. I love, it's all about that mind body connection and it's just so powerful um, and you can come home to yourself for that short practice. Um, yeah. Yeah. And also I wanted to mention, so, I mean, because you have so much goodness everywhere, not only like in your Zen membership, but you also have amazing, you have some YouTube videos, right? Where you also share some of your, your yoga practices. Yes. Yes. I wouldn't want somebody to um, sign up for my membership without ever having experienced my teaching style. So, and mm -hmm. I just also like, I think yoga should be accessible to everybody. So I've got a variety of free um, yoga practices and some other mindfulness practices on my YouTube channel. Hmm. And I love every time I mention, we talk about you, you have a smile on your face. Like I can tell you like Rachel, she loves what she does. It's she has a beautiful way of teaching and sharing this beautiful gift with everyone and really, yeah, making it accessible to everyone at the same time, right? So I really, I really love that. So one more thing I wanted to ask you about is that with the mindfulness, right? Because let's be real, like we have challenges in life, right? We sometimes go through phases where 
the worries and the anxiety comes up, but we have big life transitions, right? And we feel more, we may feel overwhelmed, we feel like extra kind of stress. And I would love to hear your take on, you know, really allowing ourselves to embrace our journeys and to be with what we have instead of like comparing ourselves with others, because I think that can happen so quickly, right? Where we feel like we're on the wrong path or we did something wrong or because somebody else is there, right? So I would just love to hear a little bit of your insights on that. Yeah, one of the most meaningful pieces of advice that I've gotten came from a yoga teacher and she said to meet yourself where you're at. And so that ripples out because I share it with all my, with mm. all my classes, with all my students. And it's really just this invitation to allow ourselves to be exactly as we are, to show up exactly as we are, and to support ourselves exactly as we are in whatever way that we need. So, you know, some days your energy is going to be lower than others. Some days your energy is going to be higher. Um, sometimes something really happy happens. Sometimes something really sad happens. And mm. it's part of our life journey to experience that full space spectrum of emotions, that ebb and flow mm. of energy. And so just allowing ourselves, um, you know, we may want it to be different. It's okay to acknowledge that it's not our preferred situation, mm. but at the same time, while we are acknowledging the fact that we would prefer it to be different, also accepting that this is the way that it is right now and allowing that so that we don't feel quite so overwhelmed um, by what's going on around us or within us. Yeah. So let's be in a situation right now of a person that can be you me somebody else somebody else listening right now because you also mentioned in the beginning right where your work is really about stop reacting and be more in response to life and accepting and allowing with what is so because we, we can really create our life, right? And so we, we can choose, okay, I'm going to react. So how would it look like when we're not mindful, when we're just reactive? What happens with the emotion? And how would you re recommend to respond or to be with a situation? How, how, how does it, like, in like a storytelling way, how would that look like? So let's say... I'm driving down the road and somebody cuts me off. If I just react, I could, it could be that road rage incident, um, you know, where you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. Whereas, and that was me maybe 15 years ago. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. Now, if somebody cuts me off, I take a deep breath. I come into my body. I come into the moment. I'm safe. I'm not hurt. In the grand scheme of things, did that actually affect me at all and it didn't in that particular ex you know example so just giving mm -hmm. yourself that moment to and the more you practice the easier it gets it's hard at first because you have to remind yourself to do it yeah give yourself a moment to check in with yourself and check in with the impact of whatever has just happened either you can just let it go or it's something that you have to accept and possibly work through but in this moment, the moment that you're in, all you can do is take the next step. You can't climb the whole staircase. So in the moment mm. that I'm in, how can I be okay? Mm. Yeah. So it's really about, well, we have to slow down. Well, first we have to be aware of, okay, this is now a situation. It's usually we get triggered, right? There's something that just feels really uncomfortable and we can either project it onto the person, we can scream, we can rage, <laughs> whatever that yeah. is and and that also in a way suppresses these emotions right because we're not allowing ourselves to be with it we are like more projecting it out into something else in a reactive way right or yes. we can okay this feels i'm triggered but i have the power not to slow down okay this is what's happening and now i can choose okay let me feel this discomfort you say take a breath I think that's the key right to actually breathe yes <laughs> oh, just doing it right now right it's like it just feels so good and and we have yeah. access to this like 24 7 for free right and we're like oftentimes not even aware of the the beauty of the breath and how it can help us release everything yeah and then we we can shift that right and then usually what I have experienced at least it is more uncomfortable in the moment because it's easier just to react in the moment like ah and like you know and then we kind of feel good we got it out quickly but we didn't fully process it and then 
usually I find, well, the rest of the day, it just doesn't go as smooth, right? When we are more in this reactive kind of state. But when I can actually mindfully be with it, breathe into it, maybe also express how I feel or whatever it is. So do some yoga, right? I mean, yoga also then helps to move the energy and release it. And then it's a much more graceful experience, right? Where I can receive more goodness in life and also see life from a different perspective. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I mean, then it's really, it's those in every moment we have the opportunity to choose. Yeah. Right. We have the opportunity to choose to be the reacting person or we choose to, you know, be with it, release it, breathe into it and shift it into something really beautiful, you know, and it, obviously that's a muscle to build. Like, like we would go to the gym and want to have a six pack that doesn't happen from one time. So it's, it's about being mindful consistently over and over and over again until it becomes a way of being right. Yes. So that's exactly it. A bit, we are back to habits building habits that's when I was first doing my health coaching certification I mean that's you know right that's what we all talk about building habits takes time and the beginning and that's another thing I mean in the very beginning I think that's always the hardest part because let's say most of our life we have been more reactive right I think all of us we haven't learned I mean that's not something we learned in school or kindergarten you know how to deal with emotions and triggers unfortunately no and I think in the very beginning like let's say it's the first time I'm being mindful. I mean, for my nervous system, it's a threat because I'm not used to it. I don't know that it's safe, right? Yeah. So, so what what is your approach there when it's really, really new? When mindfulness is really new to somebody and they're feeling uncomfortable with it. Yeah. And I it's not, not even safe in my nervous system in some way, right? Yeah, yeah. So I usually suggest that people choose something that helps them to feel anchored and safe. So for many mm -hmm. people, that is the breath, but for some people, it's not the breath. So mm -hmm. what, what is something that for you makes you feel anchored in this moment, safe in where you are, safe in your body, safe mm -hmm. in the environment you're in? And so if the breath doesn't feel like a good um, anchor, then you can use, you know, physical sensation. Can you connect with something in your body, you can use the senses. What do you see around mm -hmm. you? Can you pick out five different colors and different things you see? Can you name those five different things? Mm -hmm. Can you um, listen? What sounds do you hear? Or like if you have a pet, is it sitting next to your pet and just rubbing your pet, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it can be, it can be different for everybody. And mm -hmm. it's mostly about something that helps you to feel safe in the moment you're in. Mm, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? Something that is familiar to us that gives us that grounded, safe feeling. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. I love that. Ah, uh, yeah. Mindfulness is is beautiful, right? When we can practice it more and we, we build the muscle. And you know what's so funny? Because I mean, I, I shared with everyone that we have been working for a while now. So in my true sidereal human design or jinkies my unconscious mass, which is that core wound or occasion, is the 33. And guess what? The gift is mindfulness. Oh, fine. So yeah, I was like, hmm, that's very interesting. Yes. Yeah. And before I found out about it, I had bought a book about mindfulness. Like it's all about mindfulness, right? Where we're just, we're being um, a task one day is just to be mindful one day a week where we just practice mindfulness. And in the beginning, it's freaking hard. It is, it is. It's always like, wow, the mind is like, I want to go here and there and I have to figure this out and I have to do all these things. And like, it sounds so simple, but it's so incredibly hard in the beginning. It's, I'm amazed still. It is. I think we think 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day, something like that. It might be more, but yeah. the mindfulness allows us to not attach to all those thoughts. So it feels like mm. you can kind of, calm down your mind or even if all these thoughts are there bouncing around you don't have to connect to them you don't have to attach mm. them you can let them be there without um feeling overwhelmed or mm. constantly bombarded by that train of thought yeah you know that's a good point because recently i also i think it's a book 
the untethered soul. And I was also, I was listening to something, I think on YouTube, where it was this concept that you just talked about, like the thoughts, right? So the thoughts are the thoughts. There are thoughts everywhere. We're picking them up, which I also have learned from the human design where we can pick up other people's stuff. It's not ours necessarily, but I'm the thinker of the thoughts. So the thoughts will always be there. It's not like we can make them go away, but I can choose again if I'm entertaining and thinking the thoughts. Yes, <laughs> yes. Know? So that was like, ah, this is, and I'm still kind of like trying to get my head, my head around, my thinking around it to fully get it. Yes. But it's like, it's true. I get to choose if I get sucked up and become the overthinker of it, or I'm just okay, it's just a thought, like I'm seeing a little cloudy outside right now and it's going to pass. I don't have to make any meaning about it. It's just the thoughts. Yeah. You know, so ah, it's so interesting. I mean, I know Eckhart Tolle and all these people have been selling, saying this for like decades, but it yeah. takes time, right? It really takes time to get it. And then I think there's all these little pieces and then your teachings we read those things, we hear those things. And I think at some point when we actually experience it, because I think mindfulness is not something we can mentally figure out. Mm -mm. It's, it's, it's a live body experience and it takes time. It does. It does. And I think that's one thing that drew me to you with the human design, because it's all about coming back to the body. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think that it's so powerful how they work together, the mindfulness and the body and the mind-body connection, mm. um, trusting ourselves. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. So you feel also that the human design has helped you a lot with everything you were doing already, right? Like connecting more to self, trusting yourself more. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely. I feel like, um, I don't know, I'm big on self awareness and self-growth mm -hmm. and so I'm just very curious about learning you know why I am the way I am and how can I more authentically show up in my day-to-day -day as who I really am yeah. and I know we don't need permission to be ourselves but I feel like the human design like by learning about it you're like oh that's why I am the way I am that makes so much sense and mm -hmm. then you stop trying to fit yourself into this mold that didn't ever fit you in the first place yeah Exactly. It's and yoga is so the same way. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Yeah. It, like that we said in the beginning, right? It's kind of doing the same thing. It's just from a different perspective. Uh -huh. And and some people may never resonate with human design, you know, but they totally extract the same essence through yoga and it could be vice versa, right? That's so beautiful that we have all these different tools out there that the universe gives us access to so we can come back home to ourselves, like you said. Yes. Exactly. So exactly. Wonderful. So I think that's also the big benefit of your membership, right? The Zen space where people can actually build this muscle because it's not something, oh, you it's not about doing yoga once. It's actually about really living a mindful life. And if yoga is something that lights you up, that brings you joy, right? Then that may be the access point for people. Yes. You know, which is it's just different for everyone. So I absolutely love it. And definitely check out your podcast, everyone. So the Mind Magic Mindfulness Podcast. Please support Rachel there. And um, and I, I guess you're open for guests as well, right? So if anybody feels like they want to be a guest, they I guess they just reach out to you. Yes, that would be so much fun. I love connecting with new people. Like, exactly. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to put everything in the show notes, like your website, your Instagram, the, the Zen space as well. So people know how to uh, reach out to you. And before I let you go, Rachel, I would love to know, maybe we, we already shared it and talked about it, but what's the one nugget of wisdom you feel like is the most um, transformative or has been for you in your life that you would share with everyone? I think for me, it would be the first step is awareness. So noticing mm -hmm. when I'm not in the present moment, noticing when I'm I'm standing in a, my physical body, but my mind is somewhere else and just bringing myself back to my body, bringing myself mm -hmm. back to my breath. And that can be so powerful for anybody when you notice, like just become like you're, you're a detective. It's fun. It's playful. Don't take it seriously. But when you notice that your mind is not present in your physical body, with your physical body, just gently 
acknowledge it, notice it without mm -hmm. any kind of judgment, but then let yourself come back into where you are. Feel the ground beneath you, feel the breath moving in your body, notice the sights and sounds around you and just notice how you feel even for that moment. And then just do it as often as you need to. Mm -hmm. That is such a good point, right? Because if we are not aware of it, it's also with the whole healing, right? Like if we're not even aware we're reacting, we're not aware we're suppressing how we feel or we're trying to run away from the discomfort, there's not much we can change about it. Yeah, it's so true. Mm. So, so powerful. Thank you for sharing this, Rachel. Thank you for sharing your light. Thank you for being so open and curious. Thank you for sharing your gifts with the world and now with a beautiful podcast i love having you in my world as you know and uh yeah it was such a joy to have this conversation with you yes it's been fun thank you so much yeah you're welcome and for you listeners i'm sure you took away lots of nuggets of wisdom i always recommend go back listen to the episode again because it's like reading a book right when you read it the second time you're like I don't remember reading it the first time. <laughs> and then you have these big aha moments. Um, so definitely do that. And for those of you that are also feeling like Rachel a year ago, that you may want to also launch your own podcast and you want to have it easy, you can already sign up for the wait list for the next easy podcast launch. I don't have the exact date as I'm recording this, but I will definitely keep you all posted. It's going to be an amazing experience again. And thank you, Rachel, also for sharing your experience with that, because I think that is just so valuable to, to hear from like a you know real person that has done it and you actually have put your podcast out into the world. Again, it's the Magic Mindfulness Podcast. Highly recommend you check it out. <laughs> and yeah, this was it for today. Thank you all for tuning in. And as always, I'm very excited to be with you all on the next episodes. <laughs>